enzyme inhibition. An enzyme inhibitor is a substance that slows or stops the normal catalytic function of the enzyme. Um, and it can happen in different ways. But here's, here's our picture of a normal substrate and the enzyme, that same, same one we've been looking at all day. So here's the substrate, and it comes in, and it binds to the enzyme, and this is normal. Well, what can happen to mess that up? There's something called reversible competitive inhibition. And this is where you have another molecule that resembles the enzyme substrate enough that it can come in and bind to the active site. So here we have this competitive inhibitor, and this side of it is similar enough to the actual substrate that it can come in and bind to the enzyme active site, even though it's not a substrate. It's not going to undergo a reaction, and, in, and it won't stay there forever. It'll just come in, and then it'll go out again, and then, then the next molecule that can come in may be the inhibitor, or it could be an, an, an actual substrate. So we get the inhibitor molecules and the substrate molecules competing randomly for the active site. And so the inhibitor is going to affect the rate of the reaction, it's going to affect the enzyme activity by blocking the active site. Because when, when the competitive inhibitor is in there, then the substrate can't come in. And so the amount of substrate that gets, gets catalyzed to the product is going to be lower because there's competition for this active site, and that's why it's called competitive inhibition. You can um, reduce the effect by increasing the substrate concentration. Because when this guy leaves, what affects uh, the next one coming in is how many. If you've got a whole bunch of inhibitors out here, it's more likely to be an inhibitor. If you increase the concentration of the substrate out here, you increase the chances that the substrate molecule will go in there. And so you can, you can overcome that by adding more of the substrate molecule. There are many drugs that, that act in this way. They will, um, um, antihistamines are one. Your body's making histamine, which my body's probably making a lot of histamine right now. And it does things to your body that, that you don't like. And so an antihistamine will come in and it will block the active site and the appropriate enzymes so that those histamines can't be made or can't be made as quickly. And so it, it inhibits it in a competitive way. There's also non-competitive. And what's really different about this is that the non-competitive inhibitor is going to bind to the enzyme somewhere other than the active site. It's not going to compete with the substrate for the active site. The substrate can come in there, but because this inhibitor is binding somewhere else, it alters the active site enough that it's not going to work. So the substrate can come in, and it can dock in its little docking station, but the docking station is not active because it got bent out of shape or, or somehow otherwise affected by this competitive, non-competitive inhibitor. When you've got a situation like that, increasing the concentration of substrate is not going to increase the rate of the reaction. It's not going to have any effect. Because the problem is not that the substrate can't get in here. The problem is that you've got this non-competitive inhibitor somewhere else on the enzyme causing problems. And really the only thing you can do is to lower the concentration of the inhibitor molecule. Or I suppose you could increase the, the enzyme concentration. And if the inhibitor concentration was the same, that would help the situation as well. Both of these are reversible, meaning that you can get the inhibitor to come back off again. Then there's also irreversible inhibition. And what this does is it actually inactivates the enzyme. Um, it could be a substance produced by a pathogen or a bacteria. And what, um, what can be a little frustrating about the biochemistry and talking about enzymes and things is we're not talking about specific kinds of molecules anymore. We're talking about what they do. And so it could be, um, it could be a metal ion. It could be an enzyme, a different enzyme coming in. It could be a protein, an amino acid, a fat. It could be all kinds of things. 
and in, from many different sources. So when we have an irreversible um, in, inhibition, what happens is you've got some sort of a molecule forming a, a covalent bond, not just intermolecular forces, but actually bonding to one of the amino acid side chains at the active site. And so you've got your active site, and now you've got this thing that's stuck there. And it's like, you know, jamming a match into the key, keyhole of a lock. You can't get the key in anymore because there's other things stuck in there. The inhibitor does not have to have a structure similar to the substrate. It can be completely different. It's not going to come in there and dock like the, I, I think of it as, you know, the spaceship. And it's coming and landing on the space station, you know, it comes in and it docks and it fits in there. It doesn't have to fit because those intermolecular attractions that hold it, the normal substrate on there are not what's coming into play here. It's actually forming a covalent bond with one of the side chains. Um, examples of this are uh, chemical warfare agents. Um, and, you know, we've all heard stories about these. And what they do is they bond to the enzyme, and then that enzyme does not function anymore. And many of your enzymes, if you shut down enough of them, if the concentration of the enzyme gets too low, they can't catalyze the reaction sufficiently and you will die because your, your reactions are not happening like they need to happen. Organophosphate insecticides do this as well, um, but they do it to insects. So those, those two things operate on irreversible inhibition. Once those things have bonded to the enzyme, there's, it's irreversible. You can't undo it. It's done. The only thing that you can do to get around it is to make more enzymes, and that generally takes time. So let's identify the type of enzyme inhibition associated with um, each of these things. So here we have an inhibitor that has a shape and charge distribution similar to that of the enzyme's normal substrate. So we had three different kinds of inhibition. We had competitive, non-competitive, and irreversible. Which would this be? I think I heard two different answers. This is going to be competitive. It's competitive because the inhibitor is similar to the normal substrate. So if, if the inhibitor and the substrate are very similar, the inhibitor can come in and bond at the active site. It's going to compete for the active site with the normal substrate. What if we have an inhibitor whose effect can be reduced by simply increasing the concentration of normal substrate present? That's also competitive. So you do need to understand the basics of those different types of inhibition. Here's an overview. Competitive inhibition. The competitive inhibitor can come in and bind at the, excuse me, bind at the active site. It's reversible though. It, it will also leave again and you have competition for this site. Non-competitive, there's no competition for the active site. The inhibitor is binding elsewhere and by doing so, that's changing something about the active site and making it not active anymore. And here's the picture for the irreversible inhibitor. So here we've got this thing, whatever it may be, and it comes in and it permanently bonds into the active site, and now the substrate can't fit in there anymore. So this enzyme molecule's done. It's, it's not going to work anymore, ever again.